And in the beginning, I really reacted like, oh, oh, I'm so sorry. Like, I'm like, no, it's like, I mean, it's good, but I worked really hard for it. And it was just pathetic. My response was pathetic. And I recognize that now. <laughs> Tina with Picture It Personal Finance, where I ask you to picture your goal, plan to achieve it, and enjoy your success. I received a comment not long ago about this idea of how do we overcome shame and guilt about making money. And I don't have all the answers, but I have some thoughts on this, right? I'm not a therapist and I'm not a psychologist, so if you deal with really deep-seated shame, then it's probably important to go speak to a therapist. I certainly would encourage anyone who can afford it to have those types of conversations and take the value of having an educated, unbiased person weigh in on some of the troubling emotions that you feel. Um, that being said, I've been very honest in the past about being able to overcome depression and be able to um, overcome other mental hurdles in my life by practicing thought awareness. So I am going to speak a little bit about a personal story that I have with sort of guilt and I would say shame with growing my income and growing my wealth and then bring it back to a philosophy that I um, and maybe not a philosophy, but an approach that I take and I use consistently whenever I am working through any um, troubling patterns of thinking. And, and this is something that I took from Brooke Castillo, not wholly from her, although she teaches something very similar and she explains it really, really beautifully. So I will plug her podcast. It's the Life School life school coach. I'm screwing that up right now. I didn't write it down, but I will definitely link it either up above or in the comments below uh, so that you guys will have access to it. She calls it her self-coaching program or self-coaching model. And it's something that I was doing naturally and I want to teach it to you guys. I've talked about it before, but all right, let me just get to the point. Um, so let me start by saying this. I will share with you my personal story of dealing with some shame and some guilt over increasing my income. I grew up very blue collar, as did my husband. We were not wealthy. I would say we were either lower middle class for a portion of our upbringing and then middle middle class. And my husband probably spent a bit of time under the poverty line and then ended up going to lower middle class to middle middle class as well. And knowing that we had grown and formed really great attachments and friendships with people who were of that sort of financial class or that um, wealth class. And then knowing that we wanted to break free from that and move to a greater level, we nobody shunned us for that. Nobody really said that, that was a bad thing until we started actually doing it. And I've come to realize a few things is that so often when we have shame and guilt, it's in response to how other people react to our success. And I really want people to pay attention to the fact that if you have a noble goal and a noble aim and you pursue it, that in and of itself will not produce shame and guilt in you. There is going to be a thought or a reaction to somebody else that typically will do that with a few caveats to that. And I'll get to those in a little bit. Um, so when we were having this journey, I had a friend who would say this thing to me and it would drive me nuts, but she would say, Oh, it must be nice. Must be nice to have such success. Must be nice to have money in the bank. Must be nice to be able to afford that handbag or that car. Must be nice to have new furniture. And in the beginning, I really reacted like, oh, oh, I'm so sorry. Like, I'm, like no, it's like, I mean, it's good, but I worked really hard for it. And it was just pathetic. My response was pathetic. And I recognize that now, but it took me for a long time because what was happening is that in those comments from her, I was internalizing this idea that she was saying that you think you're better than me. That's the way I interpreted what she was saying to me was her projecting that feeling of, inferiority. Well, I can't have that. So must be nice that you have it, little miss rich girl. And that was really the way I took it. And then my instinct was because I loved this person to say, no, 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 it's not like that. I, I, I'm not better than you. I don't think I'm better than you. Yeah, I have these great things because I worked really hard to get them. But 
don't judge me. <laughs> That's the key right there. Don't judge me. Like me. Anyway, that was my experience. I started doing a lot of self-work in terms of setting bigger and grander goals for myself. If I'm having problems with this person saying this to me when I'm making 80,000 a year and judging the car I have at that income level, but I know that I wanna hit 200,000, what's it gonna be like then? And I didn't want to, I know there's a lot of people that say you outgrow your friends and you should sort of like just let those fall away and there's probably truth and value in that, but this wasn't something I was prepared to do. But it unfolded that way and it unfolded that way because my mind changed and what I started to say is every time somebody said to me, must be nice, and frankly, I'm speaking about this one person, but it happened with a lot of people. A lot of people, when they see your success, will feel discontent and will try to pull you down or rein you in because that's the nature of people. They resist change and they especially resist change in other people that highlights to them their own lack of ambition or lack of success. And so every time that person would say to me, must be nice, I said, you know what? It is nice. <laughs> it is so nice. It is so nice to have a reliable car. It is so nice to have savings in the bank that I don't have to be afraid if I get sick. It is so nice to have a roof over my head and the comforts of my home. And even though I struggled with my own internal gratitude for many years, I still chose those words because those were the words I was teaching myself to get over my own gratitude problems. And now I was forcing myself to say those to other people and the funniest thing happened. My shame diminished, my guilt diminished, and people stopped saying that stuff to me. I. The, the literally the week I am like not exaggerating at all when I tell you that I have literally had that conversation with a number of people and I only had it once they would say that to me I would respond with that and they never brought it up again I don't know if they just understood that I had experienced this shift or if they were embarrassed by the fact that now they're highlighting their lack while I'm affirming my success and so I want to share that story because I really had a mental difficulty with being almost like, I don't want to say brazen. It wasn't the word that's coming to mind is brazen, but that's not what I was. I just was unwilling to be belittled for my accomplishment. And once I um, really truly made up my mind about that and I started responding in that way, the difficult conversations with other people that made me feel embarrassed about my success they just stopped happening. So that story I hope highlights to you that so often our guilt and shame is wrapped up with other people's opinions about us um, and then how we react to that because of our desire to be accepted and liked and loved. Now, part two of this video is a little bit more, you know, philosophical um, and deep diving reflective, right? As you are dealing with these things, I firmly believe that what our actions are triggered by emotions and our emotions are triggered by thoughts. So if you are feeling shame and guilt and that's causing you to act differently with your money, it's not that if it's causing, it is, it's causing your shame and your guilt is causing you to handle your money and make life decisions in a way and take actions in a way that really aren't serving you. So what you need to do is you need to figure out what is the underlying thought that is triggering the emotion that is triggering the behavior. So for example, um, somebody would say that to me about, oh, must be nice. And, and the thought that I had was they think I'm better than them, but I don't want to feel better than them. I don't think I'm better than them. I think we're equal. And then that would lead to an emotion of shame and anxiety. And then I would have an opportunity presented at work, but I would rein myself back. I would resist leaning into the opportunity because I didn't want to further grow that thought that my success um, devalued people I cared about. 
So in order to break that cycle, number one is you need to understand what that underlying thought is. Because I could have heard that person say, must be nice. And I could have thought, it is nice. I'm so happy. I can't wait till I have even more success, right? Because then that thought leads to another action that's going to cause me to lean in more and be um, more excited about the work that I'm doing. And then the result of that is going to be more success and more, you know, um, receiving of blessings, I guess is the way I'll put it. So in that situation, now my success is greater. And here's the big kicker. A lot of people that get hung up on this thing of like, well, your love of success, your ambition, that's evil. And I, I hate when people say that I really hate it because success and ambition in and of themselves aren't, is not evil. It's bad when you put that ahead of people or ahead of relationship or ahead of your relationship with God. To me, those are like the big problem areas. So when you're working through those negative emotions, you have to really think about, okay, I feel shame right now because of what's going on in my life. But is that a justified shame or an unjustified shame? So in the example that I gave, I was letting other people, fear of how other people thought of me caused me to feel shame and guilt. It was not justified because I wasn't really serving myself or them or a higher power, right? If I was serving, um, if I, if I reined myself back and had less success for those reasons, then I have less money to give charity later. I have less money to have um, the comforts for my future. I have less money to leave a legacy for my children. I have less success overall. And therefore I have less that I can do good with, right? But if my shame is rooted in the idea of, um, I have a big, like maybe I, maybe I do have a lot of success and I have a family member who is truly, truly struggling and I don't give any thought or care to that. I don't try to offer them advice. I don't try to offer them assistance or support. I don't try to walk with them in their difficulty because I'm too caught up in my own success in my own life and I look down on them and then somebody says something to me that triggers shame because I recognize it's a, it's a, it's a righteous shame. It's a purposeful shame. It's a shame that is legitimately highlighting to me behavior that is not good then that is an appropriate shame. And then you should change your behavior so that that shame doesn't come again, right? So there's the shame where you are thinking erroneously. And then there's the shame where you're acting erroneously and you've caught yourself in a bad habit or a bad behavior. And now you need to correct the behavior because there's, you know, I mean, if we want to go deep on this, there's a thought that caused that as well. And that thought is probably that my wealth is more important or my success is more important or the way people look at me is more important then this person over here who really that relationship should be the most important thing. Um, anyway, I hope that really explains to you guys the way I think about shame and guilt when it comes to money and having greater success. Do not rein yourself in because of the way other people feel about you. And, and frankly, this applies to other areas of your life. For example, a long time ago, I wrote a blog post about a woman who I know and I adore who lost over a hundred pounds. When I first met her, she was a big woman. And when I saw her two, three years later in person again, she was just this tiny little stick of a thing. And I just couldn't believe it because I was struggling with my own weight loss journey. And this thing happened where I was really, really happy for her, but I was also um, jealous and mad at myself because I thought, man, she, I need to lose 20 pounds. She lost a hundred. Like what is wrong with me? And so I started to, um, have a negative reaction toward myself, which if I wasn't self-aware enough to understand that, and I just felt that negative emotion, I might just immediately knock the woman who lost a hundred pounds. Although what she did was good. It was right. It's extending her life and it's an inspiration to others, but I would have tried to knock that down because I felt bad about her success. So recognize that often if you let um, other people's success affect you that way, that you, you can hold yourself back, but more importantly, know that your success will make other people feel that way and they will try to hold you back. And if you let them, that's on you. All right, guys, I get a little heated about this topic and I feel like I might have jumped around a little bit. So if the explanation isn't very clear, um, please let me know. But really, it's this. Just to quickly summarize it, 
If you are feeling shame because of your success, there's an underlying thought that's triggering that emotion. That emotion is affecting the way that you behave and your behavior is going to cause um, your future success. It's gonna affect your future success because the last behavior will always support the original thought. Whatever the behavior you end up with is, it will affect the original thought. It will reinforce the original thought. So pay attention to your thoughts. Be aware of what you're thinking and be aware of what other people say to you, how that affects the way that you're thinking and then triggers that waterfall effect of you have an emotion, you take an action and then there's outcomes. All right, guys, there you have it. I hope you are all doing wonderful. I hope the new year is bringing you some peace and success. And as always, like, comment and share. I will see you in the next video.